A very good evening to you. What a wonderful opportunity to share the word of God with you, talking about the treasures of God. And I found that the more I dwell on this text, the more it has become alive for me. Now Psalms 31 19 says, Oh, how great is thy goodness which thou hast laid up for them, that's us, that fear thee, which you have prepared for those who take refuge in you, to trust him before the sons of man. From the scripture, I realize that when we trust him, we can receive the good things God has laid up for us. As born again children, we have a great salvation. A good place to begin your understanding of the word uh, of salvation is by learning the meaning of the word and the benefits which through salvation we have become part of. To serve the Lord will bring untold blessings to and for us. The word salvation refers to deliverance from all kind of evil, both temporal and eternal. Now Psalm 31 says and declares the goodness he has laid up for us. In that goodness is restoration, there's healing, there's wholeness. After all, the Bible is the most important thing in your life. It's God's word. It tells you what he's promised. If you don't know what God has said, you can't believe and receive all the good things he's provided to you. Now, John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me and my words in, abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That's the treasure house of God. The closer we walk with God, the better our lives become. The more we do what he tells us to do, the more of God's blessings we will enjoy. And the more we'll experience his goodness and all his promises he's promised for us. The question is, how do you keep the door open to receive these promises? As Pastor Patrick always says, by giving God first place in your life. If we want to live the good life God has, has for us, He has to be the center of our focus. He has to be number one. I would like to say this is, uh, this is always easy, but it is not. We can become so caught up in the cares of our daily life as a result that the cares and the anxieties uh, of the world creep in and suffocate the word, and it becomes fruitless. You can read this scripture in Mark 4 verse 19. But to keep yourself in condition to experience the fullness of your salvation, we will have to do what Psalm 91 2 says, I will save the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress, my God. On him, on him I lean and rely, and in him confidently trust. Since the days of Abram, God has been promising his people a land of their own. And it's a promise that applies to us also. It's a place where all the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ. When you occupy your promised land, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God of our Father who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings and going on. We may say, that sounds like a nice theory. But we are dealing with reality here. All I see is poverty, sickness, and oppression everywhere we look. But that's to be expected. The devil isn't going to lie down and play dead just because God has promised us a promised land and have stored our blessings are waiting to be taken up. We must be prepared. There will be giants along the way trying to keep you from entering into your promised land. But God says in his word, John 4, 4, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There's no time to talk about the giants. We'll do that on a later stage. I want to in closing telling, uh, tell you of a friend of mine who had an experience by the sea once where he discovered how good it is to have someone by your side helping you through the storms of life. He said that while he was preparing himself to go for a swim, as he normally did by in the sea, he noticed the powerful waves and the sound coming from them as they were moving to the shoreline, taking everything in its way with them. But it was, a while, but it was while he was in the water, swimming, 
and going beyond the surface, it suddenly struck him that under the water, the breakers and the thunderous roar of the powerful waves just seemed to be distant and gentle and had no effect on him. He said he then realized when you dive beneath the surface with God in his word, all the turmoil of your daily life, all the problems and trials that crash around you like huge waves just seem to be quiet down and a peace just fills your heart being with the master. Is that not what he said in Isaiah 40, 29? He gives strength to the weary and to him who has no might, he increases power. The storehouse of God, as Psalm 31 says, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them and who takes refuge in him who trusts him. Let's just serve the Lord with all our hearts. The treasure house of God is open.